Hey everyone, we're in our new shop, and as you can see, we've moved the Dark R1 prototype in here to finish up some of the systems work before flight testing. The challenge we've been focused on since our last video is the design and manufacturing of the Retrek system for our main landing gear. Structurally, the landing gear had been complete for a while, and we even taxi tested the airplane on them. But we still had to finish up their Retrek mechanism. Technically, we can fly the airplane with the gear left down. But to explore the full flight envelope and complete flight testing, we still need to be able to fully retract the gear. Retract systems are challenging to design, but the system on the Dark Air 1 is particularly tricky because of the design constraints that we're up against. A lot of these constraints stem from having to fit our gear system into a tight space claim. Having a tight space claim makes the retract forces high because we have a short lever arm for the retract actuator to react against. And on top of all this, we want the system to remain lightweight. Up to this point, we've explored a number of traditional approaches for actuating the landing gear. We've looked at electric linear actuators, we've looked at hydraulic systems, and we've even considered manual retract mechanisms. These types of mechanisms were either too big, too heavy, or they couldn't output the amount of force that we needed. This left us down the path of designing our own actuator, which looks like this. We're currently in the process of installing these and running our first test with them. We're really excited to share the progress on this, so I'm gonna hand it off to Riley to show you more of the details behind this system. As River mentioned, we've been working on the main landing gear lately, and the big piece of progress has been on the gearboxes that drive our landing gear struts up and down through the retract motion. Before I explain how these work, I wanna talk through the basic structure and architecture of our gear struts so that we're all up to speed on what we've built so far. So our gear are built around a set of Behringer wheels and brakes, and those are mounted on a pivoting arm called the trailing link. That's where our suspension action comes from. So these pivoting arms swing up and down and compress these gas shocks. These absorb all the energy on a hard landing. The shocks and the trailing links are supported by the strut here. This is a composite strut made from carbon fiber. The struts are constrained in the down position by our drag links. There's a lower drag link and an upper drag link, and they hold the gear in the down position like this. That click sound you hear is a locking mechanism. So it locks the gear in this down position and constrains it so it doesn't fold or collapse. These landing gear are retractable. They have to pivot and swing up so that we can eliminate the aerodynamic drag load that they would otherwise incur if they were extended. So I'll show you the retract motion. They swing backwards like this and fold into the fuselage. And then they come up and lock in the up position. That click you hear is another locking action. It locks it up into the fuselage so that if we pull a high G load maneuver, it's not imparting load into our actuation system. You can imagine that positive G loads would try to pull the gear strut out of the fuselage and that lock holds it up rather than having the actuation system trying to hold it up. So we'll extend it and lock it again. There's a little bracket on the back of our gear strut that interfaces with a hook up at the top of our drag link mount. And that's what catches on that little bracket and holds it up. That same lock mechanism constrains the drag link in the down position. So we've seen the basic structure here that we would use for landing and taxiing. I've shown you the retract operation, the lock down and the lock up functionality. Now we need to actually drive this through the retract motion and that's where our gearboxes come into play. Let's talk about how these work. This is the gearbox that's gonna drive our landing gear struts up and down. This is the right side unit going on the other side of the aircraft. And then the left side gearbox is actually installed already. You can see it tucked away up in the wheel well. So this is gonna drive the gear strut up and down. The idea here is that within this gearbox, there's a bunch of gears and it's just a big gear reduction drive. There's a motor that attaches on the back side of this gearbox and that drives the gears within here. And this is gonna transform the high speed output from our motor into a much lower speed at this pinion output gear, but with much higher torque. So this little pinion gear interfaces with this large gear that's attached to our gear strut. And that's what drives it up and down. So we're trying to get a lot of torque to make this thing actuate. A couple of people have asked about failure modes. What if you have an electrical system failure? Or what if the motor here just dies for whatever reason? There's a clutch in this gearbox that allows us to disengage the motor from the rest of the drivetrain, and then our whole gear strut can free fall under gravity. So that's actually what's going on right now. We have the clutch actuated so that it's not engaged with the rest of the motor or the drivetrain, and our gear strut can free fall. 
So it only free falls so far. You can see that gravity would take it down to maybe about here. The other thing is we're gonna be fighting aerodynamic drag load. Drag's gonna be pushing this gear strut back. So to get it to the down lock position like this, there's a gas spring that interfaces with the strut like this. There's a little bracket on the gear strut. And then this will be mounted up in the wheel well like this. I haven't installed the hard point for the other side of the gas spring, but this will force the gear to the down lock position. So as we retract, we're actually compressing this gas spring and it's working against this gas spring during the retract operation. As we extend, it's helping it come down. So that, this is all for emergency extend event. These gearboxes are CNC machined. We normally do our machining in-house. That's how we made all these other landing gear components like the drag links and the strut bracket that they're attached to. But we were working on some other projects in parallel, so we decided to outsource these gearboxes and we teamed up with Zometry to make that happen. Zometry does on-demand manufacturing, so they're a good resource if you're trying to get something machined or 3D printed. In this case, we were machining both aluminum and steel. The way it works is you upload your CAD file to Zometry along with some dimensional drawings if you have any tight tolerance dimensions. We had that with these gearboxes. There's a hole pattern as well as some tight tolerance bores that have to be a specific diameter. So we captured those dimensions with drawings and uploaded those with our CAD files. After we submitted all the important information, we were able to pick our manufacturing process and the lead time that we were willing to work under. And then we could basically hit go. Parts showed up a couple weeks later and then we were able to assemble them, install them and start testing the whole system. We've actually run a couple tests with these gearboxes already, running these up and down. We have some more work to do. I'll get to that in a second, but big shout out to Zometry for sponsoring and manufacturing these gearboxes. Designing the actuation mechanism was one of the more challenging pieces of the whole landing gear project. This is because of the conflicting requirements that we're up against. The big ones being that the actuator had to be small and compact to fit in the tight space claim that we're working with. It also had to be lightweight. We're always chasing weight savings. And then it had to have enough force or torque to actually drive the gear strut up and down. On top of that, we had requirements around edge cases like failure modes. What do we do if a piece of the system fails? All these requirements start to feel almost impossible to meet, especially if you're limiting your design to off-the-shelf solutions, like when we initially pursued a hydraulic system or electric linear actuators. We didn't want to design our own actuator, but after looking at the requirements, we were forced on the path of coming up with this gearbox solution. In the testing that we've done so far, this has met our requirements, but we're not done with the system yet. We haven't used the motor to drive the gear strut to its limits of travel. We still have to install limit switches so that the motor knows when to turn on and off when it reaches the end of travel. Those limit switches will also provide position indication for the pilot up in the cockpit. Burr has been working on some electromechanical logic so that this whole system sequences properly as it goes up and down, but we're gonna be covering that in an upcoming video. Like Riley mentioned, we have several items we need to wrap up before we can move into full retract testing. In parallel with this, we're also going to be conducting drop tests to confirm that the gear can tolerate the range of loads that they'll see during flight testing. Keegan is also wrapping up the installation of some upgraded nose gear parts to prep the nose gear for its own set of drop testing. But we'll save that for another video. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.